Hello everyone, The Kentucky Patriot here. We're on the range today with this Henry 22 Magnum. This was actually my grandfather's and uh, my, he, of course my dad has it now, but we've borrowed it. And uh, we're up here at the range today and old Catfish John here, uh, he's a known fisherman and he likes his uh, 410 and 20 gauge, but today uh, he's gonna try this out with a scope. Uh, it's actually got some great sights. It's got like the uh, good, you know, really good iron sights on it, but uh, my grandpa uh, had a scope on it. That's why dad still got it set up. So we're gonna try it with a scope today and shoot a little bit. And I'll talk a little more about Henry, uh, but again, here in a minute, but this is the 22 Magnum and uh, we're gonna see if John can hit a water jug with it. What do you think, buddy? Let's see how old catfish John does with this Henry 22 Magnum against this water jug. Pretty good shooting. Just tell you a little bit about this. If you're not familiar with Henry, um, of course, <clears throat> even a tall guy like me is certainly a very good brush gun, very easy uh, to carry around. So even a tall guy like me can really appreciate and enjoy uh, the smaller uh, carbine maybe style of a uh, Henry rifle. They're not usually a, you know, a real big full-size rifle. Uh, but now I'm quite a bit taller than my dad and my dad's quite a bit taller than my grandpa So my grandpa for a lot of reasons one they were made in America and he Loved these lever action lever action guns depends where you're from Mosin Nagant M1 Grand M1 Garin So it depends where you're from but uh, anyway my, my grandpa loved the Old West style and this action is super smooth uh, He had several uh, my grandpa had I think the, the 44 big boy in Henry uh, he had, his, uh, had a 22 LR, of course, this 22 Magnum. He had a 3030. Uh, he had a lot of really uh, cool Henrys, and he really uh, loved Henry. That was his favorite gun maker. He always talked about Henry, and, and like I said, this one was his. And if you've never shot them, I, I think you'll really appreciate them and enjoy them. They're, they're just a lot of fun. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about them and a little bit about uh, the 22 Magnum. This one here is a 22 Magnum and a uh, great little varmint gun. A lot of people use them for, uh, you know, coyotes or uh, whatever. Great little varmint gun, great little shooter. Again, where this one's a smaller, um, you know, like I said, small stock, a small barrel. Me personally, I think I would do without the scope and use iron sights. Um, but of course, he's got a scope on here. Um, and uh, as you uh, work the action, it then cocks the, the hammer and you're ready to roll. This does have it does not have an external safety on it uh, but these are just really a smooth action fun shooting uh, gun old west style look and again if you've never checked out henry you've never shot a henry uh, i'm telling you it's certainly worth the look there there it says repeating henry repeating arms and uh, that, that, you know, they got a website and you can check them out they're always at the nra conventions uh, but just a lot of fun a lot of history to them and uh, like I said, this one here is a 22 Magnum version, which it is a rim fire, uh, but <clears throat> I really enjoyed the 22 Magnum. Uh, I've loaded them with alternating ammo. It's not just uh, you know certain kind. I've got some Hornady, I think V Max, some uh, Soft Point, uh, uh, some some hunting tips. Just different, just different uh, uh, grains. Just different, just different rounds. See how this will cycle them. See how it'll run them. And uh, and I, like I said, if you've never seen a tube fed these tube fed what it is you actually unscrew this or kind of twist it to the side you pull it out and you actually will put the bottom of the case right here after this tube's gone and you will actually drop them in there and that's how they load of course this is how they feed and they eject from here so uh, really cool little setup here and uh, i'll hush and we'll get to some shooting and i don't mean to ramble and go on but you have to understand you know there's folks that watch this video that uh, have has shot and been around firearms more years than i've been alive and then you have people just getting into firearms or maybe just carry one for a, a like a concealed carry every day and not familiar with different kind of rifles and different kind of uh setups and everybody's probably pretty much familiar with the 22 lr 22 long rifle you're basically 22. these are actually the 22 magnum shells and if you can see it's just basically a longer case uh, these are actually both 22 Magnum. Uh, this one is the Hornady, the V-Max, and I think this one's one of the gain points from CCI or soft tip. Uh, but you can see the case. It's just basically like a 22, just a lot longer. Um, still rim-fired. <clears throat> but they're a lot of fun, and uh, you've never seen one before. 
And in case you're wondering, a lot of people maybe ask about recoil, uh, there is basically none. Even though you've probably seen my little boy shoot that water jug and uh, have a lot more power than the uh, uh, 22, so uh, it's up to you, but you gotta watch about shooting small game like squirrels and stuff. You can damage meat unless you shoot, you know, get a good head shot. So uh, th th these are uh, uh, traveling a lot faster, have a lot more velocity than your uh, 22 LRs, uh, but they're still a lot of fun with, with basically no recoil. Great for children. Another problem other than being rimfire with the 22 Magnum is these are expensive. Uh, I'm not sure really why they're so much more expensive, but you can basically uh, spend a little bit and go to the range all day on a box of 22 long rifles. These are uh, uh, quite a bit more expensive. So those are a couple of the downsides of being rimfire, uh, but, but these run them great. They're fine, but a lot of you like center fire better. Uh, but when it comes to uh, 22 Magnum, that's your choice will, will be the rimfire. And like I said, the expense is a little high, but other than that, no downsides to them. I love it. It's a lot of fun. It's a great joy. So the 22 Magnum and the Henry, we'll get to some shooting, ha have some fun at the range. And again, I'll show you this, how this action actually works. Again, no external safety. So when you're ready, when you actually engage your round, as you can see, when this comes back, it actually cocks your hammer for you. So then when you chamber around, you're ready to go. So here we are. And uh, let's try her out here. There you have it. And I'll just show you here what I was talking about when it comes to tube fed. That's another downside I forgot to mention. Uh, of course, you always wanna make sure your uh, firearm is um, unloaded before you do anything. Always treat a firearm as if it was loaded and check and check and recheck. That, that's a negative side to the tube fed as well because you're up here working with the muzzle. Even when you try, and I know there's a rule, I, 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 I say it myself, um, you know, uh, don't point the gun at anything that you don't wish to destroy. But, but even if you try, you, you, I'm not saying you can't, but it's still real easy and people will uh, accidentally get your hands around this. So that's why it's, it, it's just so important. You make sure it's unloaded. Also to check to see if it's unloaded, what happens is as you check to make sure it's unloaded, uh, the hammer's cocked like I showed you. So when you let the hammer down, still just make sure there's not one in the chamber, make sure that you didn't try to uh, check. And then as you thought, well, yep, the chamber's empty, then you know, forget that there was one in the tube. And then when you uh, put this back down, the hammer's cocked and you go let the hammer down. Even if you let down easy, things can happen. So I'm not trying to talk you out of this. I'm not trying to say this is a terrible setup. I'm just telling you just to be careful because you're doing a couple things there. Uh, like I said, to check it, it's gonna cock that hammer you let down easy. Uh, if there's one in the tube, like I said, when you check it, you can actually chamber around. So be careful with that. There's a spider here trying to take over, but I'll teach him a lesson or two. But anyway, uh, I'll show you what I was talking about about tube feeding and, 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 and on camera here I'll probably be real clumsy and end up uh, looking like a, a big goober here But uh, anyway, it's real simple. You just simply turn it as you've seen me do uh, If I can get rid of the bugs here, uh, and then like I said, just kind of still watch that muzzle if at all possible Which is a good practice. You pull that out You can just lay it there I want to roll on me. We're going to peel a little bit. And literally, this is all you do. As I told you about the bottom of the case, you literally feed them in. And I don't care to tell you, when I make a mistake, I'll tell you on camera, I own up to it. I'll tell you I'm not perfect. Count your rounds on a rim fire. Uh, it's, not, it's not nearly as imperative when you're uh, uh, using a uh, 9mm Glock or a Smith & Wesson or your uh, AR-15 when your uh, bolt locks back. It's not the end of the world. But on a rim fire, and I won't get into the debate with you, but I'm just telling you it's not a good idea to dry fire a rim fire, uh, whether it's a revolver, whether it's uh, a rifle. Uh, you do whatever you want. If you buy one, that's up to you. You can dry fire it all day long, but I do not like to dry fire rim fire uh, <clears throat> firearms. And again, this is rim fire, so try to count the rounds because that was my fault when I shot earlier. Uh, I thought I had an extra round in there, and I didn't, and I ran it dry. So there's one, two, three, 
four, and you can see I'm, again, using different uh, ammo and manufacturers. I believe that is number seven, if my math is correct. And then, literally, you just put this tube back in this little slot, and as it feeds down, you just push it in. Again, kind of watch the end of the muzzle. And this little piece here, this little knob there, will then just lock in place. So to get it off, you literally just turn it, slide it out to get it back on. I don't know if you can see that. But to get it back on, you literally just... And that's it. And that's all there is to it. And then you just uh, will work the action here to chamber one. And... Um, that's all there is to it. So, like I said, I'm not, not, not trying to uh, talk you out of this. I'm just telling you uh, the pros and cons to every system. And I'm not even saying that it's, it's, it's dangerous or you shouldn't get one. I'm just telling you to, uh, just to be careful, okay? Because uh, I'll tell this, and it's not to discredit anybody or make fun of anybody, but, but I know a gentleman who's been around firearms for years and years and years and years was in the military. I mean, he, but no matter who we are, we're still human. It's easy to get complacent with it. And he was cleaning his gun and actually shot himself through the arm. Uh, with a rifle that he thought was unloaded, you know, but so things can happen. So you can't take somebody's word for it. You, you can't think, I think I unloaded that. So please, uh, like I said, we love the Second Amendment. We love firearms, uh, which is such a great joy. We make such great memories. We talked about in other videos, but you know, you always got to be careful because safety is number one because, you know, you're, you know, and thank God it just went through his arm. He ended up being fine. No, no big deal, but uh, it could have been deadly. It could have hit him somewhere else beside the arm. It could have went through the room and hit somebody else. He had other rifles. It could have been something besides a 22. Uh, and this is a 22 Magnum, so it's going to be a lot more powerful than your 22 uh, long rifle. I mean, what if it had been a hunting rifle? So I don't mean to uh, ramble or go off too far, but like I said, when you're working around this end of the muzzle, now I certainly want to be careful because I'm working around it and it is loaded. So anyway, just keep that in mind. I'll get to some shooting and hush and uh, appreciate you watching. Again, I'll show you how the action works. There you go. Um, I didn't really have any major targets today. And up here at the farm, we've got hillsides. We have a great range for uh, pistols and, and short distances like shotguns. I really don't have any long range uh, targets or any long range shots to really show you on this. Uh, but I'm telling you, this gun is ridiculously accurate. And it's not because, oh, you think you're a good shooter. It's not that at all. Uh, what I'm telling you is this little gun and, and the 22 Magnum round will reach out there at long distances and put the bullets right where you want them to. And they're just so much fun. And especially to put a scope, I wouldn't be able to shoot this accurate without the scope, but I just like iron sights myself. Uh, but I'm telling you, for a child or for, or for somebody that's older or has some uh, shoulder issues that can't uh, handle recoil, maybe you've had shoulder surgery or something, you can take this out. And other than the expense or the cost of it, uh, you can shoot all day with little to no felt recoil. I honestly don't feel it. It's not that I'm trying to be tough or macho. It's just this big of a gun shooting this small of a bullet. Uh, it's just a barrel of fun. So. Uh, but I mean, even if you just take that, you gotta watch about shooting your trajectory and that's why I don't wanna shoot those uh, pine cones out because uh, there, there is some possibility some people could be out in the woods that way. Uh, that goes on to another farm that's not my dad's. Uh, but if you have a good safe place to shoot, shooting um, hickory nuts off of trees, shooting uh, pine cones like that are uh, just a blast. Uh, I wish I could do that, but like I said, safety's first. But I'll shoot some more and I'm just shooting like little limbs and stuff and it's just dead on. This is just a lot of fun. I will tell you this and then again I'll hush but you gotta watch your grains because if you set this scope, let's say you're using the VMAX of 30 grain like I showed you from Hornage with a red tip and then you try other ammo that's different grains or different weights or different bolt designs, it may not be right on as uh, your others were because when you set a scope in, you need to set the scope in for what you plan on shooting, you know, whether you're hunting or whatever, not just having target practice like me when it don't really matter. Same thing with your uh, uh, concealed carry ammo. Just because you, you, you're, you're hitting with this certain ammo, if you change ammo and grain and brands and all that, it also can hit, uh, change your point of impact. So anyway, I'm gonna shoot a little more and really enjoy this. I wish, I wish you could be here with me. I really do. I wish I could hand you this rifle and say, try it. And I, I know you'd love it. And I believe this one is my last one. I think this is number seven right here. I checked to make sure. I'm running out of targets here. 
I'm running out of limbs. And she's clear. But anyway, when I show you this again after it's clear, this is why you got to make sure it's clear because look at here. See that trigger? You have to let it down. Make sure you let it down easy. Point it in a safe direction just in case. Even if you check, please, so you'll just keep it pointing in a safe direction in case something happens. And there you go. Henry, made in America or not at all. I don't have any specs for this, but in case somebody asks me, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'm 99% sure this is the scope my grandpa had put on there. Uh, but I don't know where he got it. I don't know um, who got it for him, if it was dad or he put it on himself. But if in case anybody's wondering or curious, this is a Bushnell sports view scope, and that's all I know about it. Because like I said, this was the scope it was on today when I grabbed it. I assume my papa put it on there. But the little scope ran great. Uh, the Henry, repeating arms company. Check them out. You'll be glad that you did. May God bless you, the Kentucky Patriot. Uh, got a Facebook account. Really appreciate it. If you'd check me out there, if you would, please like, share, and subscribe to these videos. It really helps. Anything I didn't go over, anything you want to add, any comments, any certain ammo you want me to shoot with any of the rifles you've ever seen us uh, have or shotguns that we've had on the channel or pistols or whatever, uh, we're here for you. So anything you want to talk about, uh, topics I haven't covered or whatever, just leave it in the comments below. As always, keep it family friendly. Again, Appreciate you so much for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. May God bless you. The Kentucky Patriot, signing off.